Can you guys quiet down, please? We're starting. Okay. So we're going to see how far we can get today. Uh, we're just going to focus on sine and cosine graphs. Um, let me kind of read some of the fine print here, and then I'll start filling out the table down below. So arc length. Uh, so the arc length along the inner circle corresponds to the exact radian measure. We talked about that, right? Like if you have a... Um, if you have an arc that's the same measure uh, or same length as the radius, then the central angle will be one radian. That's how one radian is defined, right? Um, and so we can use the circle itself as a number line. So the circle, if you took the unit circle and unraveled it, that actually would be like a number line. And that's how we go about graphing uh, sine and cosine. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, so the input values will be angles, right? So the input, when you graph sine and cosine, the input's always gonna be angles. And usually we use radians. We rarely graph stuff in degrees. It's incredibly rare. When we graph, we're gonna be using radians, just so you know. And the reason why we use radians is that when you move on to calculus, when you start applying all these calculus principles, you may have friends who are taking calculus or talking about derivatives or integrals, all, all that stuff, or older siblings that are taking calculus. A lot of those things that, a lot of those formulas that are using calculus, the way they're derived, assume radians. So we have to work with radians graphically. If you don't like radians, get over it. We have to <laughs> work with it. Okay, good. So um, we're going to focus on um, sine and cosine today. And we're going to use common angles, like, for example, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, pi, and so forth. And we're going to be focusing on these kind of angles when we're uh, applying the points. And again, the way sine and cosine graphs look, it's almost like taking the unit circle and unraveling it. We're going to talk about how that looks in just a little bit. Some terms you guys need to know. Uh, let me get a text box. It'll be a little easier. So a cycle is one complete pattern. So for example, that's one cycle, right? Because what happens afterwards? It repeats itself, exactly. The length of one cycle is what we call the period. So that's the horizontal length of one cycle. And a periodic function, just in general, Why am I talking about that? That was silly. I know, right? A function, yeah, I know. That's redundant. <laughs> so it's just a function of a piece of a particular interval. So Like that's periodic, right? Because it just uh, kind of just keeps going. And so there's a certain interval that it follows and it repeats itself over and over again, right? Um, amplitude is half uh, half the distance from the max and min values. on a sine or cosine graph. So the amplitude would look like this. Or to go blue. Half that distance is the amplitude. Or you could think of it as just like from the middle to the top. That works too. Or the middle to the bottom. That works too. But when the graph gets shifted, right, up or down, it's probably easier to do top minus bottom. But sometimes you can find a new middle that works. I call it the midline personally. So uh, we'll talk about that when we start shifting graphs. Uh, the key points, you want five points. Um, for sine theta, You want middle, high, middle, low, 
middle. So what, what we have here in red and green, that's high. Middle, high, middle, low, middle. For cosine, is to start high, high, middle, low, middle, high. However, sometimes the order gets reversed. So why would the order get reversed? Reflected. What causes reflection? What the negative outcomes, right? Not in the inside. That's a different type of thing. The inside. Uh, in fact, actually, if you put a negative inside, it would change this direction. Um, it would change this direction. Um, so even off less will talk that too. But yeah, you would be able to reflection and get a negative outcome. Okay. Um, so far, okay. So it seems like all the review, right? Cool. Let's keep on moving. So how does sign look? Okay, so sign looks like this. So as I said, it's kind of like you're unraveling the unit circle in a way when you graph these. So let's make a coordinate plane like this. Uh, what's going to be the peak, by the way? One. It'll never be more than one unless you do a vertical stretch, right? Never more than one, and never less than negative one. Hmm? Well, sorry, so space below. Oh, I think you're stacking it. There's new right here. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I didn't see that. I didn't see that either. Okay. So, you know, what? Um, let me position it like this then. Here we go. Thanks. That's actually very helpful. Okay. So, yeah. So, let's use um, the space provided. Right? That makes more sense. All right. So, um, it's going to look like this. So, sine of zero is zero, right? Basically, you're taking the y coordinates and plotting them, right? So, sine zero is zero. Sine of pi over two is one, right? Sine of pi is back to zero. Sine of three pi over two is negative one. Sine of two pi is zero. So you're using the unit circle to help you make the graph. Um, negative pi over two is back to negative one, back to zero, back to one, back to zero. And if you so care, you can get a little bit finer with this. Pi over four, pi over six, and pi over three. Uh, pi over 6, I think, is 1 half, right? We're doing y equals sine x, right? Um, then it's like root 2 over 2. I mean, it kind of looks like this. But you know what? We know it's going to have this nice curvature to it, right? And by the way, don't get sloppy with it. Um, like, for example, don't do this. Like, don't get sloppy, guys. It's got to be nice and smooth. And the reason, and don't do straight lines either. The reason why is because you're going to be applying calculus principles where you have to find slopes of tangent lines. And you need to make sure that you have the curvature done correctly. It's, it's really going to mess you up down the road if you don't. I, I know I didn't draw it perfectly, but... Okay. Now, what do you think domain is going to be for these? For any sine curve? Yeah, there's no restriction at all. The range will be limited. We're doing sine x, by the way. Now, the range could change if you do a vertical translation or if you stretch. If you say it's like negative a to. But also plus k. Oh, so yeah. nice k. We're not there yet. We'll get there later. Okay. But yes, you are correct that um, generally that's what happens. Um, the amplitude is one. Was there a thing for amplitude? No? Oh, that's weird. Um, yeah, let's let's write the amplitude. I don't know why the amplitude is not stated here. Uh, amplitude is one. Let's write that in. Amplitude is one. Amplitude is never negative, by the way. Even if you reflect, you still report the amplitude as a positive number. It's always the absolute value of a, because a is the number out in front. The absolute value of a is going to be your amplitude. Uh, period. How long is one cycle, guys? Two pi. Uh, the symmetry is even or odd. It's odd. Because if you rotate 180 degrees, you get back to the same thing. Or sine of negative 30 is, is negative sine 30, right? Uh, the x-intercepts, uh, generally speaking, are going to be um, uh, basically pi k. Do we need to use k? What, what do, you, do you want to use different letters? Like, you want to use n? Like, it doesn't matter which one we use. I don't care. Okay. How about that? You guys like n? I like n. I don't care. 
Oh, I can actually. <laughs> all right. I, I just terrible rank k's, but that's all right. Where k is any integer. So zero counts, right? Because zero is an integer, right? Um, the y intercept, of course, is zero, zero, the origin. Um, I think, yeah. So, so far, we're good. All makes sense. Okay. All right. I'm going to clear that. All right, guys, let's focus. All right. Absolute max. What's the highest y value here? And lowest is negative one. The five key points. So I would consider all these. Um, I'll, I'll highlight it actually. That's all right. You want to put it back, please? Thanks. Zero, zero, power of two comma one, pi comma zero, three pi over two comma negative one, and of course two pi comma zero. Discontinuities, um, none. You know, guys, you guys know what discontinuities means? Breaks of the graph. Sorry, I should have. Uh, Totally. Like They do have that. We're not going to talk about that today, but the holes were glass with that, right? And actually, um, this week, this week. Sorry. Yeah, we're not doing we're not doing uh tangent hitman today. Oh, so we we did that uh Wednesday. All right. Um uh, asymptotes, none. Okay, so very straightforward. All right. Okay, coastline, let's move on to coastline, guys. And we actually we are doing transformations today. So we are going to do that. Yeah, I know. All right, here we go. Cosine. Cosine starts here. It goes down to the, um, the x-axis. Down to negative one. So again, you're using the x coordinates on the unit circle. So the x coordinates on the unit circle are the outputs for your cosine curve. You're still using the same inputs, right? Like 0, power 2, pi, 3, power 2, 2, pi. But the x coordinates on the unit circle are going to be your... Um, outputs. And if you so desire, you can like, you know, do pi over four, pi over six, pi over three. I know um, cosine pi over three is one half. Again, the curvature does matter. You want to make sure that you get the curvature correct. Okay, we're okay with that. Uh, domain again is all real. Range, same thing. Amp is still one. Period is still the same, two pi. Uh, do you guys know the general formula for uh, period? Two pi over... Five B. Yeah, we're going to get there today. But yeah. Uh, symmetry, what's symmetry here, guys? Uh, even. Even? <laughs> you're, you're answering another question. What? Go, go ahead and say, uh, what were the x-intercepts? This is a little tricky. So power over two plus k. Yeah, or you can say this. You can say k pi over two, where k is any odd integer. You can say it that way. That could work. Yeah, just k pi. Or some of you guys, what, what, you could also say uh, pi over two plus k, where k is any integer. That works too. It's up to you. I decided to do k pi over two. It's up to you. But I say k is any odd integer though, if I say k pi over two. So it just depends how you define it. Totally up to you. 
Uh, the wire step is um, 0, 1. Okay, I think that's, yeah, there, there, there's more, obviously. Questions so far? No? And by the way, cosine is a complement of sine, right? See how direct is shifted by pi over 2? It should be. So if I were to shift this graph, pi over 2 to the right, what graph would I get now? So, sine, right? Or from an identity, from an identity viewpoint, which we won't talk about until the next unit, if I did cosine of x minus pi over 2, that equals sine x. Totally, 100%. Yeah, that's where these identities come from. Once you see the, what's happening graphically, these identities make sense, right? Like, for example, if I were to plug in, um, if I were to plug in, let's say, fiber, like, let's say, wait, I missed this one up, actually. I missed one up. That's not like, no. What they did? Hold on. Oh no, I did not. I'm good. We're good. I didn't mess it up. It, it's correct. Yeah. So guys, we're putting like say five or um, two five three. I'm putting two five three. Two five three minus two would be um, five or six. Minus something plus two would be five six and one half. And cosine. And this would also. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Cosine. Sorry. Sine of um, two five three would be three three over two. Actually, no, this would be um, 5 or 3. You have 2, 5 or 3 minus 5 or 2. 4, 5 or 6. Oh, you're right. It is 5 or 6. Sorry. Yes, you're correct. So, 3 or 2. You're right. You're right. It works. Bottom line, it works. Let's move on. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Let's let's more of this table here. Okay. Absolute max is what, guys? 1. Absolute min, negative 1. Five key points, but we're going to do an order. Zero, one, pi over two, comma, zero. Yes, dude, good. We'll, we'll get there. We'll talk about it. Uh, three pi over two. Yes, excuse me. <laughs> and the last one's going to be two pi, zero. Two pi, one. Two pi, one. Oops, my bad. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, no asymptotes, no discontinuities. How do you obtain the graph? I just did it for you guys. Cosine of x minus pi over 2 equals sine x. And again, as an example, what if x were like 2 pi over 3? Cosine of 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 2 would equal sine of 2 pi over 3, which I know is root 3 over 2, and that's going to be cosine of, and thanks you for correcting me, that's pi over 6, which is still root 3 over 2. So you know it works. It makes sense, because it's shifted by 90 degrees. Okay, transformations. Let's get, let's get there now. Okay, so generally speaking, you want to think of these functions like this, y equals a times sine bracket b x minus h bracket plus k, where a is going to be the amplitude, also for reflection, about the x-axis. B is going to impact the period, which happens to be 2 pi over B, right? It impacts. It's not the period, by the way. It impacts the period. You know what? Let me, let me, let me make that better. Sorry, guys. That's just terrible. Yeah, so A, amplitude, also reflection about x-axis. If A is negative, um, the period equals 2 pi divided by B. H is a horizontal shift. 
and K is a vertical shift. Okay. So let me show how I do it. I don't quite use the cloud method per se, but here's how um, I like to kind of go about doing this. So I have a start and an end, right? So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna start it, you're gonna set the inside equal to zero and set the outside equal to two pi. So this is your angle, right? And where does sine cosine start anyway? Zero and two pi respectively, right? So whatever's inside the, the parentheses of bracket, I'm going to set that equal to zero and two pi to figure out how things are fixed. So if I set this equal to zero, what does x equal? Zero, right? So I'm gonna start at zero, great. How about here, if, if I, um, Set that equal to two pi, where does it end? I mean, yeah, where does it end? Six pi. So you're gonna start at zero. I'm sorry, go ahead, Brooke, what was that? Inequality, inequality no? Yeah, like you did zero is less than like one third x is less than two pi. Why would you do inequality? I'm just oh. <laughs> it's just basically saying. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, okay, sure. Do you want to do that? Sure. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. You're 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 consolidating the process. All good. You could, you could, but here's the reason why I'm doing it this way. Here, now, here's the reason why I like it this way. You need to have um, three partitions, right? So you need four equally spaced intervals. So you need three partitions. What's halfway between zero and six? What's halfway between zero and three? Or three pi over two? What's halfway between three pi and six pi? 4.5 pi or nine pi over two. I know it's a little tight there, but by not, so I do that partition. Now, what's my amplitude? So you can go up to and down to. Personally, I would space that a little bit uh, better, but we'll just roll with it. Okay, great. And what am I dealing with, sine or cosine? Sine. So you're going to go middle. I, middle, low, middle. So here, 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 here. Personally, I totally want to question me that I'm boring thing. I feel this is highly efficient. That's supposed to problem. Yes, you can use the cloud, like you take the sign curve and like do all the shifts, like if you look at it. Raise it up to get it, you know, compressor goes on, blah, 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 whatever. Honestly, figure out where that ends and stops, right? For one second, figure out ends and stops because the parent function ends and stops at 0, 2, 5. So what I've done by saying it's equal to 0, 2, 5, I've taken care of the horizontal shift. It's taken care of. The period's taken care of. And then I know generally what's, what's going to happen. I have to have the partition. So I do a three partition. So I use symmetry, right? Like for um, just simple map like averages, like here, 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 great. And I don't have to have these five two points. I just have to. This will also help when you have to start moving graphs down and up and down. This will help too. And by the way, this will also take care of horizontal shifts for you. We'll see that in just a second. So it really consolidates the whole process very nicely. Uh, the period, of course, is two uh, is six pi, right? We know the period is six pi. Amplitude is two. So there we go. Okay. So questions, we're okay. All right. Let's keep moving. Are you good? As far as like grading, like on a test, do you always want us to do that specific? Like, I don't care actually what you do. It just make sure the graph looks good. Okay. Yeah. So use whatever technique this. I'm just I'm just modeling for technique I like. But like, yeah. uh, I mean, like in terms of technique, I mean, like, do I do this instead of the like first period? Do I do something like that? Uh, but that graph is. Oh, I see you're doing. Oh, uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. okay. I see you're doing. Okay. So you started and ended with, that's fine, yeah. Okay, and then how can you get the amp period and amp two from the equation? That's A, period is two pi over one third, which of course is six pi, right? So easy peasy. All right, let's keep moving here. Um, the absolute value of A is always the amplitude. 
and 2 pi over b. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but there you go. So there you go for that one. Oh. Always assume b is bigger than zero. Always assume it's bigger than zero. If it's not, what you're going to do is going to make the inside negative. Like, for example, if you had um, y equals, like, say, cosine of negative 2x plus pi. You know, you're going to factor out 2. And then you would have, like, negative x minus pi over 2. And then you would deal with, like, a horizontal reflection. We'll talk about that later. But if you have something like that, always make the b value positive. Of zero, then you don't have anything. Yeah. You just have a line, right? You have a horizontal line. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great, it's a great question. Because, yeah. So that, that's zero. Cosine is zero is one. Cosine is five. Cosine is three. Yeah. Four. Okay. Yes. Oliver. Um. So in that equation you had before, cosine two negative x plus five. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. What would the order of transformations be? So in that case, I would actually just use the rule, or it would be different than what we did what we did it before in the previous unit. I actually, we'll look at the inside and shift it first. And then do, but that's why I like this technique of start and end. So you don't have to worry about that. I, I don't like the whole cloud transformation because it gets really confusing. So we'll, we'll, we'll see some problems like that. I'll show you my technique again. But, but we could also do the cloud just to make sure we get the same thing. So you understand, hey, mechanically, like you know, I'm doing, I'm going this way first and then doing this afterwards. We'll do that also just to make sure we get the same thing. But it just, it creates a lot of confusion. That's why I prefer this technique. Yeah. Outside. Exactly right. It just gets kind of crazy. Okay, this one here. Let's do this one next. So again, start and end. Start two x equals zero. End two x equals two pi. So x equals pi. X equals zero. So I'm starting at zero, ending at pi, and space it out nicely, and then partition three times. When you partition, this is pi over two. This is pi over four, and that's three pi over four. I know it's really hard to read. Three pi over four. Um, we'll say this is um, three halves and negative three halves. You can label you, you can space that however you like, you know. And it is reflecting. And be careful. Don't say reflection. That's vague. Reflection about the x-axis. So is it starting high or low? No, starting low. Then no. it's going to hit this, hit this, hit that, and that. There's a curve. Amplitude's easy. Amplitude's three halves. Period is easy. We just see it for ourselves. It's four pi. Sorry, it's pi. My bad. It's pi. So, yeah, that's all. Well, yeah, the fun begins soon. Okay, let's keep moving. We're done at 3.15, right, today? Okay. Yeah, we're going to see how far we get. Okay, so it's shifts and uh, transformations, right? So, in this case, you're going to shift five left. and three down. The order does not matter because they're doing different things. One's doing some vertical, one's just horizontal. As long as you don't have anything else going on, you don't have like an A value or an A, or I'm sorry, a B value. Um, you can really just take the um, origin, the sine curve, or zero comma one for a cosine curve, and just do the shifts. You know, and again, whether you go up, down first, or left, right first, doesn't matter. But the challenge occurs when you do have to incorporate vertical horizontal stretches or shrink with the translations, right? That's where it does get a little confusing. So um, there are a few tricks. I already told you what I like to do, so we're going to do it. We'll just go jump to right here. Okay. okay. 
We're going to do my way. Here's my way. Exactly. Just like Frank Sinatra. There we go. <laughs> I'm not sure if I got that. Okay. My kids love that movie. I love them too. They're there to sing too. Yeah. Yeah, my middle kids, she likes like singing. Um, yeah, she's just like. favorite singing here? The panda's kind of cool. No, no, gorilla. No, no. The gorilla or the mouse? It's the gorilla or the mouse. Yeah. Actually, I do too. I like the pink. There's like the sparkly suits. All right, guys, guys, we need to get back to this. Uh, we could talk, sing to you all day, but all right. Okay, start and end. So whatever's inside the parentheses or brackets, wh whatever is the angle, we're going to set it equal to 0 and 2 pi. It's going to take care of the period, and it's going to take care of the shift. It takes care of everything all at once. So when I solve it, 2x equals pi over 3, x equals pi over 6. I'm starting at pi over 6. Next up, 2x will equal 7 pi over 3. You guys see that? Because what's 2 pi as a fraction with 3 as, as its denominator? 2 pi is what is a fraction that can make 3 the denominator? 6 pi over 3. Add pi over 3, you get 7 pi over 3. Divide by 2, you get 7 pi over 6. Sorry, that's just a little notification. Okay. Now, Oliver, you're asking about the cloud, right? Yes. So here's what I could have done. If you so desire, you could have done this. Factor out the two, but that becomes pi over six, right? And then you move it pi over six. So does it get pi over six? Absolutely. Does it get uh, dilated or solid by factor two? Strength by factor two? Total. Does it set two pi? Now it's pi. And I shift it to pi over six, right? So we shift to pi over six, and we reduce it horizontally. So you could look at it that way too, and that's totally PEMDAS, right? Yeah. Totally PEMDAS because you do the pi over six first, and then you do the um, to shrink afterwards. But personally, I want to consolidate the whole thing. Set equals zero and two pi. I think it's more efficient. Very good. Yes, 100% you do. Yep. All right. Now, the partitions. This is where... Um, see, people mess this up because they don't have an organized approach. I'm incredibly consistent. You have the video here if you ever need to watch it, which I'll post at school. But I don't stray. That's just how I... Like, I seriously, I get up and do the same thing. I have routines. That's just how I live my life. So, yeah, we're going to be very routine-like here. What's halfway between pi over 6 and pi over 6? What's halfway between them? See? Not easy, right? You can reduce if you want, but let's leave it 4 pi over 6. Um, uh, that's kind of tricky. I don't like that one. Uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. It's Ooh, that's nice. Okay. Okay. Five pi over twelve. No, you know what? Don't do that. That's just a little much. That's I think it's a little crazy. Not necessary. You you know there's equal partitions, right? It's totally cool. Okay. Now next up, guys. This is the part where I really need you guys to focus. There is a vertical shift, right? Where's what's a vertical shift? One. I like to call that the midline. I'm not sure if Ms. Wong did the same thing. She did? Okay, cool. So this right here. Y equals one, I call the midline. It's not a, you know, there's no symmetry going on there. It's just kind of where the middle of the graph is, right? And uh, we have to go up three and down three from the midline. So you have to go hit four and go all the way down you know, let me space it a little more nicely. I, I didn't do a good job spacing this out. One, two, three, four. Okay, here we go. So you're going to start, and this is sine or cosine, by the way. Sine. So you can do middle, high, and it's not reflective about the x-axis. So middle, high, middle, low, middle. Okay, so we have this.
And there's your answer. Yeah. Oh, just do your best. I mean, like it's... <laughs> oh, you, you know, <laughs> I think it's probably making no sense if I just go to the Feels good though. Well, I don't know if this is exactly. No, this is the uh, entire court here. Yeah, but then that distance is in the middle to the other one. No, they're all the nasal way. Oh, I mean, what is that? I'm just trying to hear it. Um, I mean, try to make, try to make ball. Right, but take this from here to here. From here to here, it's five four. I mean, I don't, I know it's not quite the scale. Yeah. Like, it's not the same scale. Yeah. 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 Like No, I do all I care about is you start at the right place. That's yeah. Yeah, sorry if I wasn't clear about that. Okay. Yeah. Key points. Let's see right now, guys. So the key points of this, um, they're gonna be pi over six, comma one. Um, I'll tell you right now it's five pi over twelve. That's kind of annoying, but five pi over twelve, comma four. Uh, 2 pi over 3, comma 1. I think that's uh, 11 pi over 12, comma negative 2. And finally, 7 pi over 6, comma 1. Um, amplitude. I think it's being asked on the next page. Yeah. Amplitude is going to be three. Period is going to be pi. Horizontal shift was pi over six to the right. And the vertical shift was one up. So the horizontal shift is also called a phase shift. They're the same thing. So you hear the word phase shift, same thing. Same thing as horizontal shift. Um, I think I might make the next and the last problem because I really don't want to rush for the next couple pages. So we will have to continue this on Wednesday, but that's okay because we, we'll have enough time to get to do this stuff too. Um, yeah, I know it's pretty lengthy. So let's let's see. This is our last our last bit. I'll tell you what the homework is. Okay. So let's look at this question: How can we get the four characters in the part B above? directly from the equation, and how can we use those characteristics to graph the function directly? So again, um, A is three, right? Um, yeah, I, I just did it right. A is three. Um, The period is going to be 2 pi over b, because b is 2, so you get pi. The phase shift is pi over 6, and the vertical shift is 1. So that's going to be, the vertical shift is always k, phase shift is h, period is 2 pi over b, and amp is absolutely of a. And so generally speaking, the equation looks like this. And same for cosine too, right? Mm -hmm. Same for cosine. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. I think we're okay there. Okay.
Uh, you know what? I think I could do a little more. Let's just get a little more done. Actually, no. Let's wait. We'll, we'll, we'll do page 15, 16. I think we did enough for today. Okay. So homework will be the following. Let me stop recording.